everyone. I'm joined here with Dr. Steve Nissen, who has over 35 years of experience in academic medicine, as well as 20 years in cardiovascular medicine and um, intravascular ultrasound. Steve, it's great to be here with you today. It's great to be with you, John. Uh, we've had, known each other for a very long time. As you've been in the CV space for so long, what have you seen over the last 35 years as the evolution of CV disease, Steve? We've made a lot of progress. You know, if I go back to when I was uh, in uh, my early training, if you came into the coronary care unit with a heart attack, with a myocardial infarction, all we could do is put you in a cool, dark place, give you morphine, and hope you didn't die. We had no statins, no really effective drugs to lower cholesterol. And so what we've seen is an incredible decrease, about a 50% decrease in the rate of death due to heart disease over the period of my career. We've never seen anything like this in any other disease at any time in history. And Steve, certainly you've played a significant role in terms of decreasing that 50%. So as we think about the cardiovascular disease landscape over the last 20 years, as you noted, there's been a significant decrease and there's no other disease similar to this in terms of the decrease in terms of morbidity and mortality. However, over the last two and a half years, we've seen that reversal in terms of the trend in terms of cardiovascular disease, Steve. We've seen this incredible decrease in cardiovascular event rates. But just in the last few years, even pre-COVID, that progress seemed to halt and actually event rates started to rise again. The obesity epidemic now in developed countries is beginning to reverse the gains that we've made. And this is another example where we need to work with the pharmaceutical industry to develop better therapies for obesity. And I'm gonna, predict an explosion of new therapies as we work together uh, with, uh, with industry. And I think we're going to beat this disease, but it's going to take some innovation. And we're making some progress and we're getting there. What do you foresee as the future? Where do you think we'll go from here? I actually think there are opportunities. Let me see if I can kind of list some of them. Uh, certainly cholesterol lowering, you know, we're not done yet, but we're getting pretty close to being able to treat everybody. I think we need new blood pressure drugs, and I think there are some that are being developed for what's known as resistant hypertension, high blood pressure that resists the usual agents. And there's some very good innovations being done there. And the innovation in diabetes treatment, which is, of course, a huge epidemic, the progress we've made in diabetes treatment is just remarkable. Uh, and we now have many new drugs that are very effective. However, prevention is always better than treatment. And my view of this is that until we can get cardiovascular disease to not be the number one killer, we got more work to do. And, I, and that's, that's something, of course, that keeps me going. I'm 73 years old. I'm not going to quit until we get to get there. And I, I want to see in my lifetime, I want to see cardiovascular disease no longer be the number one killer. Where do you think the main inflection points as you reflect back on those years? Well, I do think that the understanding, and it's something that you and I work together on, uh, very early on, the lower you can reduce LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, um, the lower the incidence of stroke, heart attack, and cardiac death. And this concept that lower is better has evolved and evolved from, you know, what we thought was a normal cholesterol. And so we're almost to the point where we can get cholesterol levels down to safe levels in almost anybody. And we didn't have any of this when I started out my career. When we were on the, I would have to say the radical fringe, 
you and I had the hypothesis that dropping LDL levels by more would be better. And there was a lot of pushback. I mean, I can remember from the scientific community, there was a lot of pushback. And, you know, I had been involved in developing intravascular ultrasound, the technique where you have a, a, a sound wave probe on the tip of a catheter and you can put it inside the coronary arteries and you can measure how much plaque is there. And you and your, your former employer uh, were, uh, you know, interested in this. And so we came together. And this is, of course, what is, has made so much progress is this academic industry collaboration where we work together to solve problems. And so we designed a study that looked at intensive LDL lowering with a pretty powerful statin and more moderate lowering. But when we were done, the results were very dramatic. The people that got a moderate statin and moderate LDL lowering, their disease progressed. They had more plaque at the end of 18 months. And the people that we treated more intensively had no progression of their plaque. And uh, that got a lot of attention. It was a very, very uh, important study. And it paved the way for a long series of studies on the effectiveness of lowering cholesterol levels to lower and lower and lower levels. Yeah, I remember those times, Steve, when we were working together. It was great at the time because it was controversial whether high intensity statins would actually be able to decrease your um, effects on cardiovascular disease. So we've seen significant advancements. We have indeed. Fast forward now 10, 15 years, and we talked about the tools that are available to the physicians as well as to the patients. Obviously, we talked about statins. What do you foresee in the future in terms of continuing that trend down in terms of decreasing cardiovascular risk? There is something about this that I really want to say. We have powerful drugs, but they don't work if you don't take them. And studies had shown that by the end of a year after we started a statin, up to half of the people had stopped taking the drug. So the problem is adherence. You know, you don't feel sick. High cholesterol doesn't make you feel bad. It just has these terrible consequences. So people say, I feel okay, I'll stop the drugs. And we fought to try to get that that level of non-adherence down. You and I both know cardiovascular disease is also known as the silent killer because there are no symptoms for many patients. And after being on statins for six months, nine months, the patients say, well, I'm not feeling anything. So they don't go to their pharmacy or go uh, follow up with their physicians to get the refills on their prescriptions. So it is a real concern in terms of adherence, uh, making sure that we control the cholesterol, as you said. In 2007, you were named as in Time Magazine as 100 most influential people in the world in the category of scientists and thinkers. How have you used that to really advance the thinking in cardiovascular disease? Well, first of all, I can remember that I got an email uh, from Time Magazine and it said, you know, we are gonna name you as one of the world's 100 most influential people. I thought somebody was playing a joke on me, maybe one of my colleagues or whatever. And <laughs> It took me a while for it actually to, to sink in I was an evangelist and I was very willing to talk to the media and I try to communicate to the public in a clear way. And I think that's what they were, what they were really recognizing. And I was obviously very, very honored to be selected. And it did help me because I think it, it established the credibility of what we were doing in, with, in the eyes of many people. Uh, so that we could go on and we needed to be able to to talk to the public about this in ways they could understand so that they could protect themselves from a disease that was the number one killer. That's absolutely indeed true. 
And I know that you're really passionate about heart disease. What do you do to keep personally your own cardiovascular health? And what recommendations do you have for um, each individual who's watching here in terms of reducing their CB risk? Well, I, I'm thin. I really watch what I eat. I exercise regularly. And, you know, I, no matter what time I get home at night, you know, I put on my headlamp and I go out and I, I take a long walk, uh, which I think is very healthy. I get 10,000 or more steps every day. Uh, I will acknowledge that I do take a statin, you know, get my LDL cholesterol down pretty low. Uh, and I make sure my blood pressure is good. So, you know, this is a preventable disease. A lot of these risk factors are treatable. And if people will treat them, they can stay healthy for a very long time. And, you know, that's certainly my goal. I enjoy work. And if I can stay healthy, I can work for a very long time. Well, certainly words to live by. And uh, great to have a chance to catch up with you, Steve. And certainly great recommendations for everyone here. Well, thank you. And it's been really great to reconnect and, uh, and do this uh, now you know, more than 20 years ago, we initiated our collaboration. And uh, here we are, we're both doing the same thing <laughs> 20 years later. Indeed, indeed. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.